Thank you very much. And that's, I, I didn't know you guys were doing Claire's Place this month. So that's, I, I really appreciate that. Just so you guys know, um, all the money, all the money that goes to Claire's Place gets funneled directly through to families and kids who are in extended long hospital stays because those CF kids have to stay in the hospital for three weeks a month. They have been fucked by this, by this whole thing because they are so high risk. Uh, it's COVID's basically a death sentence for a kid with CF. So, so we've, we've been working overtime to get the parents support, get the kids support. Yeah. As Nicolette said, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. And again, there's, I don't want to pressure you five bucks, three bucks, anything, you know, helps. Um, uh, and if you don't have the money, no worries, uh, and enjoy what we have to give here today for free. Um, I was thinking about, I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to this morning, what I wanted to speak to. And what came to me is this, you know, <clears throat> you know, the more I work with people <laughs> and the more that I, uh, see both in myself and others, the momentum of our relationship karmas, right? The momentum of our relationship karmas, the more I realize and the clearer I am at what is needed to supersede and transmute those karmas. And more often than not, it's massive amounts of energy in the moment that you least want to give it or at least want to practice it, right? Because it's going to be in the moment where you are um, in fight or flight. It's going to be in the moment where your partner is, you're sure that your partner or the person you're involved with is a threat to your very livelihood, right? Or they're doing the thing again, or they've, use the tone of voice, the triggers. We're, so often we don't recognize that what is happening in relationships that are not working is that the two people are literally fighting for their lives. In their own reality, that's what's happening. You guys with me? Okay. So that is why relationships turn so antagonistic. That is why uh, people like Harville Hendricks, you know, they talk about um, the power struggle right? Because it's literally a power, it's a struggle for survival. And we don't often recognize this. And it's oftentimes subtle because, you know, we're, we're much more spiritual than that, than just like, you know, animals fighting for survival, clawing for survival in relationship. But more often than not, that's what we're doing. And, and if we don't get if we don't train our nervous systems and our bodies and our minds and our hearts to overcome the habitual response to the stimuli that is our, our evil other, <laughs> right? If we don't train ourselves to overcome that, we are destined to relive that past again and 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 again. And again. Right? Are you guys with me? You understand what I'm saying, okay? And I'm, I'm being dramatic here because it's fucking dramatic. I hear it, all, I hear it every day. I, I can't tell you how many times I hear how dramatic it is and how, you know, people are just rushing to tell me the story of how their partner is doing da 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 And look, not that, you know, not that we all don't have a lot of work to do, we do. But it's important that we recognize from the very beginning that um, we're dealing with an epigenetic and um, some might say lifetime, you know, past lifetimes, uh, an epigenetic, uh, biological, uh, wired, wired, wired karma, wired in your neurons, right? The same thoughts, the same responses, the same emotions over and over again. So the power of embodiment and the, the reason why I'm so um, such a big fan of embodiment because I've tried so many different things and when I found this I was like, I didn't even recognize until about seven years into doing the work that I was doing that 
shit, like this is actually a spiritual practice to transmute karma. It's not just so I can have great sex or deep connection or, right, this is actually a, a, a modality that will change the karma of my relationship to the moment, to other, to love. And what that requires of me is, and I've seen this again over the years, I've, I've done, you know, thousands of, work with thousands of people, dozens of groups. So few of us recognize, even though it's the thing we want to change the most, so few of us recognize how much actual practice and rewiring and meditation and yoga and movement and breath we have to do day in, day out, in order to train our nervous systems to have a different, to create a different reality, right? Your nervous system and your body mind will create a new reality. It's not like circumstances have to change and then everything is cool. Then you can give your love. That's the greatest fucking lie. If they were different, if it was different, if my circumstances were different, then I would be able to give it all. Then I'd be able to love. Then I'd be able to open. And uh, I'm sorry, it's just, that, is just, that is just folly. There might be some moments that open up where you're able to give freely, and, right? But in general, it's going to be, uh, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to show up to the moment, open, and able to give as much love as we possibly can. And that is how, if you can do, you know, I've, I'm sure you guys have heard this before, it's a, it's a tried and true little coaching axiom, right? Just 1% a day, or a week, or a month, right? If you can just give, if you can just train your body to give 1% more love, conduct 1% more uh, love through your body, right? you know, month after month, week after week, after a few months or years, you are a completely different person because the amount of love energy and sexual energy and consciousness and um, that you're able to conduct through your body will literally change the destiny of your life. And that's how it works. That's how it works. It does not work by us strategizing some future moment where we're going to act differently, it just does not work that way. You cannot strategize because you can't think your way into acting differently in a future moment. You, you, you guys with me? You have to train your body to show up to the future moment ready to give love. Okay? So anything that I tell you today is is first of all it's my best shot i'm not a guru i am not omnipotent i'm you know i am just a guy who's practiced this for many years and who's dedicated his life i'd like to think i dedicated my life to love um but i don't have all the answers this is my best shot for you and in every instance what i am talking about is you training now now to show up to a future moment more full by starting showing up to this moment as full as possible. So just notice, I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging you guys or critiquing anybody here, but just notice, how are you showing up to this moment? Is your jaw tense? Are you thinking about something else? Are you multitasking? Okay, all right, maybe some people have to go to work so they're listening to me and multitasking. Is your heart lifted and open? Are your solar plexus soft? Is your breath full? Right? And you just have to do that for the next 10,000 moments today. Yeah? And that's how we change our relationship karma. That's how we do it. Okay, enough from me. I just wanted to lay the groundwork. You can ask me questions on, on anything that I just said, if that doesn't make sense. And of course, anything else that feels important for you. But no, I'm going to keep referencing this. So if I'm hard on you today or I'm stern today, it's because I really want you all to get this. It's not that anybody has to do anything different. They don't. All right. So we're going to start off with Stephanie. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. 
Richard. Stephanie, hi. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, I wanted to thank you so much for this work and also for being the way that you are because it's let me access it in a, in a different way. I've been doing this work for different modalities and I don't know, the way you say things, just I, it hits and it makes sense to me. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is about masculine and feminine within myself. Okay. You're, you're heading in and out, Stephanie. So is there some, I'm, I'm getting like every second or third word or you're kind of, ooh. I'm leaning it. Is this better? That is better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so my question relates to the feminine and the masculine balance within myself. Mm. Um, I have been doing this work for a little while now. I've really come into being feminine. I went through a divorce where I realized that I was numb. I w my fight or flight was always. Right. <laughs> as a result of coming you know i was alone in a partnership just all these things that hit me all at once and because of that i really dove into this i did the work with byron katie i did a lot of the identity questioning grounding work um, women's are you gone again my love here we go i'm just gonna be in your face yeah that's fine great, <laughs> great. um so my question relates to specifically, I feel like I've done a lot to heal my feminine. Mm -hmm. I do my sheepskin practice. I meditate. I belong to a women's group. I lead somatic therapy within the group and get everyone to breathe into their pussy and their heart and open and be juicy. All of that stuff feels really good to me and I'm glad I found it. But I feel like I have a wounded masculine still. I feel like I'm still acting in this wounded way and it has to do with stuff before i started doing any of this work that i feel like the work isn't addressing okay a little tiny bit of background had i been born male i would have been richard allison clayton the third i was the firstborn of the firstborn of the firstborn and had i been male i would have continued that legacy so i always grew up with that expectation i was highly intellectualized I was expected to be the best man I could be while still being a lady. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. So, yeah. Laid out in my relationships, I'm very um, aggressive when there's something at stake, and I go into you know a very masculine mode. It's made me very successful in business. It that has really, really impacted my. because they're not a threat right okay so let me let me just let me just let me kind of fine-tune it here so when you get into are you in relationship now okay but when you get into relationship with a masculine partner your masculine if I'm understanding you correct can get aggressive and or I, you didn't use the word toxic, but I want to just reference this sort of to our toxic masculine, right? Yeah, that, it's been wounded, so it's not reacting from a healthy place. Okay, and I don't, I'm not sure it's your masculine that's wounded. Okay. I, um, so the masculine wound okay, anytime our masculine is suffering, let's, let's, and this is true for men or women, or however somebody identifies, right? Because not everybody identifies as a man or a woman. But however a human being identifies, your masculine is wounded by feeling trapped. By feeling trapped. So, or feeling like you can't win, right? Your feminine is, suffers through the, um, the, the possibility that love is going to be removed or there's not enough love so in general and i'm oversimplifying this our masculine is 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 our masculine suffers when we feel that we lack freedom and our feminine suffers when we feel like we lack love so in these moments is your freedom being challenged or love freedom i feel like i'm cornered that feeling of trapped is very real so you feel so they're they like want more of you than you want to give and then you feel trapped yeah and you lash out yeah okay okay so 
And, and like, if a man was exhibiting the behaviors that I exhibit when I'm in those situations, I would tell him, go join a men's group. Well, yeah, but I, but I think I, I, and this is just my, this is again, just my intuition here, but I think that you're just basically protecting your broken heart, right? And, and, and so more often than not, women who have, who have been validated, and there's a lot who've been validated for their masculine, for their intellect, for their drive, for their, you know what I mean? Their literally love gets heaped on them for their masculine. Okay? That is a deep, there's a deep wounding in, in, the, in their, if they're feminine, if they are a feminine essence human being, which it seems like you are, that part will suffer Right? And will be will constantly want to be seen and known. So I guess what I'm trying to discern is are you attracting men who are more interested in connection than you are? And they uh, want more connection than you? Not more connection, but I am attracting kind of artistic, feminine, you mm -hmm. know, soft, gentle. And I want to be ravished. I want to be challenged. I want like an alpha male that my alpha female can show up. To. Right, right, right. So, so that's very common. Um, it's very common. But it feels like it feels like if you're finding yourself in this trapped moment over and over and over again, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So they want more from you than you want to give. Yes, and I feel like I'm already giving so much. Like, how could you possibly want more? I'm right. already like, right. You know, with, with my ex, I was the provider, and I would cook dinner, and I. So, 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 so I'm. I'm just going to be straight with you. Is that cool? If I just yeah. okay. So you are attracting men that you do not have to surrender to, because their capacity is not. They're not going to demand your surrender. Okay. Right, and and so if they're not going to demand your surrender because they're they're, because they don't really have time for the bullshit. Right, you know what I mean? Like, a guy who's masculine, who's on purpose, does not have time to like convince you to bring your heart. It's just like, fuck, this is boring. Like, are you gonna bring your heart or not? Like, I'm here. I love you. I'm with you. Right? You aren't attracting those guys. The reason for most women, not just you, but this, I see this a lot, is that it's terrifying. It's terrifying, and. And it's vulnerable and it's scary to allow that, right? Because when you were young, your tender, playful, feminine, luscious heart was not celebrated. Are you with me? Are you, are you following this now? Yeah, it was told to get to work. Yeah, it was told to get to work, right? So you get to work and in that get to work mode, you're going to attract flow boys. I mean, nothing wrong with nothing wrong with flow boys, you know. I, sir, the, 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 you know, nothing. Wrong. However, if you if, if if you're wanting somebody to demand your heart, a flow boy is not going to do that because they're kind of taught to flow with whatever you're bringing, right? And and there's a whole sort of there's a whole thing going on with men too that 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 you know needs to be integrated, right? So there's nothing wrong with integrating. Just let me say this for any, you know, I don't want to insult anybody, but the flow capacity in men and the capacity to um and the capacity for sharpness and consciousness has not been integrated in men's work that i see most men's work that i see right and so even guys who do men's work uh miss that part so we've got hard driven very successful women attracting men who kind of are flowing and artists you know lovely i'm sure in many ways um, but they haven't cultivated that capacity to, I'm just going to, you know, speak euphemistically, throw you against the wall and demand your heart. Okay. This means that the next few weeks, months, years, possibly, you will have to practice. And I'm saying the word practice on dates, allowing yourself to be somewhat helpless and open and and here's the here's the hard part and stay there 
I've, I've been doing that more and more and I've felt it. I've felt the change, but you know, that doesn't mean that they will continue to show up. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And so these, so, so what you're, you're, you're touching on what I opened with, which is this is the karma, right? So the moment, the moment you're on a date and he doesn't quite know what to do next and you're like, but I do, right? That's the karmic moment. That's the karmic moment where you're just like, you have, you have to like relax your body, relax your solar plexus, open your heart. I wonder what's going to happen next. He seems like a good guy. Why don't I trust him? I trust you. You decide, right? And I know this is sounds, it sounds simple. No. It's, no. I can't tell you how many women I see that struggle with that moment. That moment. Now in the relationship, like, let's, let's take it into a sexual moment, right? Like, let's take it into a sexual moment. So let's say you're making out and, and you want it a certain way. So the moment you kind of direct that, the sex, you're putting him into the receptive mode, right? So instead, there's a, there's a softening of your body and a being with what's happening and an expressing of how it feels moment to moment. Mm. Ah. I mean, it, this, again, this is the hardest fucking yoga that I think almost any woman ever has to learn. How to be responsive in the moment to the level of consciousness that's in front of them. So you have been trained to be more conscious, to be more directed, to be more linear, to be your samurai, right? Your Uma Thurman <laughs> yeah. is very well right train right and so i i would just i would i would say the place to start because this is not an overnight journey but the place to start is to continue to to reveal the the part of you that is aching to be led and then when they lead you celebrate it and when they don't pout artfully pout don't take control don't step up just you could probably do it better I'm not gonna you probably could but you just like mm, no whatever whatever artful expression of that doesn't feel good that's the practice and if you keep doing that if you I mean keep doing that it it will evoke the part of him that can lead, that wants to lead, because men want to lead well. They want to lead you well. They want to love you well. They want to make it safe for you to surrender that very tender, sweet, wounded spot in your heart, the part of you know, your little girl that was never celebrated. Right? Um, so the practice is, is to let them, um, and then you can discern after a few weeks or a few dates or a few months, does this person have the capacity to meet me? And I'm telling you, most won't. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> now, 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 most won't, not because they don't want to, but because they, they've just not been trained. No, this happened recently. I went on like five dates with somebody. I didn't have sex with them. It was very just soft. I was super soft with him. I was, did not lead him in any way. My necklace got tangled. And instead of undoing it myself, I gave it to him. And I said, could you please help me do this? It mm -hmm. means so much to me. If you could, it's my favorite necklace. And then he did it and he felt like a man. It was all great. And then he ghosted me. So it's all about just staying in that surrender and not taking that action as a reflection of how well or not I'm I'm showing up. Yeah, you can always tell the moment that he, the moment that he starts wanting more connection from you, right? Um, or you you can let's forget about him per yeah. se, and let's just like yeah, it's just really going to be about like I said, your practice in that moment. Are you 
are you an invitation and I'll just use you know blunt words are you an invitation to be fucked open in that moment whether it's just with consciousness or presence or awareness, not necessarily physical, right. Sense, right? And that, so the she, we, in the work, in workshops we do, we talk, in programs, we talk a lot about she who must be. So if you want to be claimed, ravished, and ripped open by love, then you must literally take the shape of she who must be ravished and ripped open by love. That's the line I want you to, that's how I want you to show up for your next date. Like, how is, are my shoulders she who must be? Is my heart she who must be? And see what that does. And then come back next month. And yeah. <laughs> thank you. And I also wanted to thank you. You, you said something on a couple of calls ago about uh, can't blast a guy with everything you have. Like, you have to, like, give it to him slowly. Otherwise, you'll blow out his nervous system. And I wanted to thank you for that because I definitely have applied that since then because it's it's a lot for them. And I, I don't think I realized it. I was like, you know, antagonizing them kind of by over. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Sure. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Next, we have Patrick Cleary. Patrick, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, everyone. Hello, John. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Beautiful. An Irishman, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. There yeah. you go. Beautiful. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> so as one of those, as a man who wants to make it safe for for a woman to surrender, um, and not, and you know, has, has failed to not for lack of wanting or lack of trying but lack of training yeah um what's what's next where would you where would you go to look where would you guide mm -hmm. someone looking for that training uh yeah i mean so let's just start in the moment is that okay yeah okay so i can feel your heart's very tender with this yeah yeah that's fine it's all good, man. It's all it's welcome here. Just let me say that to you. Okay. And so without changing anything in your heart, I want you to just smooth your breath out and bring it as low into your navel as possible. Okay. Keep your eyes open and stay with us. Okay. Good. Now I want you to get a little taller through the spine. You don't have to stop emoting anything that's coming through you. Just get a little taller through the spine. There you go. And then just practice being here. Keep breathing. And let us feel that your own yearning, man. Men yearn too. Like I yearn, right? To protect women, to make it safe for them. I yearn to lead. Okay. So just keep everything nice and soft. And just drop your chin a tiny bit, just a quarter inch. There you go. There you go. Is that better, ladies? Could you see? He doesn't, he doesn't know this, right? So right there, you're practicing your nervous system. Your structure, the structure of your body, the structure of your breath is better. Okay, so stay with me. Now I want you to press your, the soles of your feet gently down into the earth. Again, you don't have to change anything in your heart. Good. And then I want you to just allow your shoulders to fall back and your heart to lift another quarter inch. Good. Drop your chin again. Just a little bit. There you go. There you go. Is, is this just at first blush? Now, I know he's just working with this, but ladies, raise your hand if this is somebody just looking at him that you would trust with your heart. Good. Good. So just stay with it, man. It's okay. Let us, it's all good. Like, you can let us feel it. So being with, my teacher used to make me, just like you are now, <laughs> sit in front of a room full of people and stay open while I cried. So I'm going to do that for you. You're welcome. Yeah. And this is like the part of you that is a poet. 
that it's a that's a a fierce poet, right? That is like that is um, yeah, that you're Yeats, you're Bono, you're you know what I mean? Like the 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 part of you that I'm using the Irish thing because you know I'm a Dempsey back in the day, so the that part of you that is fiercely committed to love, beautiful. All it needs is for your body mind, right, to, to create a structure to hold it. And that's the work for you, right? Now, there's a lot more to it. And uh, I mean, I lead men's programs and, you know, I would definitely come to the workshop with David because David's uh, the master of this. So if that's a place, if you want to get some work in, that's a great place to do it. Um, but for now, I would just practice being your, leading your own heart. Right? If you, if there's not a woman in your life right now, and there's just like, then practice doing this for yourself, brother. Like, fuck, I, I'm going to just hold my own heart. I'm going to be the deepest, most loving, kindest container for my own feminine. Does that make sense? Yeah. As someone who is presently mourning and grieving the loss of a partner. Yeah. Because, because, I, because I gave that job to them instead of doing it myself. I've been there, brother. <laughs> been there, man. It's what brought me into this work, right? It's what brought me into this work. That, that I, I, no one taught us as men, we have two or three generations of men who were not taught to show up and what it meant to lead, hold space, penetrate with presence, bring conscious love, all of those things. Nobody taught us that. Nobody taught us that. So you're young, you have a deep heart. You've obviously like you you're obviously there. I would I would do two things since you're how long have you guys been broken up? Saturday. And oh, we it's, together it's, for the next it's... month and a half. Oh, and you're still living together. Great. Okay, so here's what here's I have a I have a very specific practice for you. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna practice being with and you can show her. Like, you can just be like, I'm fucking heartbroken, baby. Just like this, you know, heart lifted, breath full, eyes soft, belly soft. I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm heartbroken, right? That's the first piece of just being with your own broken heart, okay? And the next piece is guiding her out of the relationship meticulously and generously, so does she need help finding a new place? Does she need, uh, do, you, do you need to help her financially at all? Does she need help moving furniture? Um, literally blessing her on her way out because what you want is for her to be happy. That's love. Love is not trying to hold on to her. Love is not ownership. Love is, okay, she's made the decision, she wants to leave. My job now is to make that as, even with a broken heart, my job is to make that as generous and, and meticulously supported as I can. Are you with me? Okay, yeah. So give yourself, the left third piece here, I want you to give yourself 20 to 30 minutes every day in the morning generally, right? I'm not sure where you are right now, but, but it's probably morning somewhere. Um, in the morning, I want you to give yourself 30 minutes to grieve. Put on music, light a candle, get on the floor, cry your fucking eyes out. And, and, and create a container for your own grief. That's an act of self-love. Are you with me? Okay. 
And then if it comes up in front of her, just let it happen. But just focus on breath, structure, honesty. You don't have to hide anything. You're just like, I love you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you move into the next phase of your life. And I'm heartbroken. You, does that feel like something, something you can start with? Feels like the most gut-wrenching. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I will thank you for this in a couple of months or a year. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there will be a time, and there might be a time in the next month before she moves out, where you will make a list of the ways that you did not show up for her. And you can, presently. Yeah, and you, and that if you want to do some more work on it, then go ahead and take that inventory, brother. And, and before she leaves, you can say, listen, I may, you know, I put you in the position of da, 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 da. I, I put my emotions above your emotions. I was erratic. I didn't have, I didn't like train myself to hold space for you. And you can do two things. You can take your inventory and then you can also create a list of, of moments and gifts that you receive from her that you want to thank her for. And, and all you can do, man, is, is bring this to her as best you can. You know, people, how we end stuff, this is something I talk about in the men's group a lot, but how we end things says a lot about us. Says a lot. And ending things cleanly, lovingly, generously, beautifully is a very important practice. So you have a, a really beautiful window here, man, for the next month, month and a half, to bring the deepest, most honest, most generous practice possible. But the most important thing I want you to take from this is that you are the masculine holding space for your own broken heart. Because it's probably not just this woman that's broke your heart, no? Right? So, so this, <laughs> lifetime, this is a lifetime of work that you now have the capacity and the opportunity to face you know, fully, openly, cleanly, powerfully, softly, all of it. Come back in a couple months and, and, and tell us how it went. Right. Good luck, brother. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, next we have Ricky. Ricky, you can unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, speak a little bit louder. <laughs> right, one more time. That's better, yeah. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and thank the community you. that you're creating and building. It's really, it's like redemption work. So I so appreciate that. Thank you. Um, my question or something that I'd love for you to speak about or comment on um, is I used to, I feel like I was at a first stage where my heart was totally closed and now it's at a second stage. It's kind of like a pistachio, like you, you kind of see it. And I'm noticing that, like, <laughs> I'm noticing that I'm bringing in two types of men. And, like, the first type is, like, the lover. And it's, like, they all have accents, you know. But they're all either polyamorous or they're only in Israel for one night. And it's, like, a love affair. Mm -hmm. And then the other side that I'm bringing in is the very, the husband material. You know, they have the job. They're staying, you know, in one place. They want to build a family. They want to be monogamous. And then personality wise they're like wind up dolls and they have a panic attack or they ghost or you mm. know like they're in their feminine and I just kind of like hold them as they have a panic attack and you know get like have confusion around their sexuality you know and then those end up ending whereas like the lovers I end up actually having healthier longer deeper relationships with but none yeah. of them are partnership right so I'm wondering 
you have any comments on how do I step up to end this partition? And yeah. Okay, this is going to be controversial, but fuck it, right? Stop looking for partnership. Right? The, the training that I see in not just women, but men and women to get a partner, right? It's the get piece, right? It's the get a partner thing that we're trained to do. And from that, it's flawed, right? Be the love that you are, because you are love, as deeply as possible, and trust that out of like, sort of out of the, I'm just seeing like out of the desert sand, homeboy's gonna like emerge from a place that you would not expect. But it comes from your deep practice and not grasping for partnership. And I'm not saying you're grasping, but I see this so much. It's like a, like, how do I get a partner? How do I get a partner? How do I, like, it's a fucking project. And it's the, you know, the calling in the one thing. The one is consciousness. And you don't have to call consciousness in. It's there. Like consciousness is pressing into you right now. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Yeah. Like whatever you want to call consciousness, God, um, you know, spirit, depth, consciousness, whatever you want to call it, right? It's already there. If you create a love affair with, the mo with consciousness in the moment and you celebrate the love that you are, with whoever's in front of you in, in ways that feel healthy and good. I'm not saying you should go fuck everybody. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if somebody am, arises in front of you that your love makes better, that's the way, right? If your love makes one of these lovers a better man because they open a piece of their heart or they show up in a certain, then that is consciousness and love moving through you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. and as you refine that and you feel the ache for, for partnership, right? There's nothing wrong with the ache of partnership. Like that's totally, totally normal. Uh, men have it too, right? I have it. You have, it's kind of a human thing, right? So feeling the ache of your partnership without strategizing. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the word, it's the strategizing because I think what's coming up for me is I've let love take over and ended up deeply in love with someone I deeply didn't want to end up with, you know? And then from that being like, I have to have the checklist, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. And when you strategize, are you in your masculine or your feminine? I'm totally in my masculine. Yeah. 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 So I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't have some, you know, discernment, of course, right? There should be discernment, but but the discernment's probably going to come from your girlfriends. <laughs> here, I, I'm thinking of getting involved with, you know, mm -hmm. home over here. What do y'all think? And then trust them. Now, you, nobody would, does this. But fuck, they're going to know much better <laughs> than you. Like, they're just going to know. And, and you know, the... I guess the thing I want you to take away from this the most is that relaxed strategy, be the love that you are as a gift to the world, as a gift to consciousness, okay? and let them appear. Let them appear. And that is often a much better strategy for men too. For men too. Um, that's often a much better strategy. Yeah, and it's it's that fear that's coming up of like that I won't be safe. That I guess is the word. That is now now for sure. You should be responsive and communicative and expressive completely. That's part of bringing the love that you are. There's a there's a common misconception that bringing the love that you are just means be sweet and sexy and da da da. da. No, it means be fierce, be in the be responsive, be be an oracle, be, make any 
man or woman, any human being you get involved with, make them, bring them more alive. Bring them more into their heart. Bring them more into consciousness. And if you keep doing that, that is now changing the, your relationship to love from a place of I'm looking to get to I'm a walking gift. And can you imagine that somebody who has some real depth and real consciousness would prefer that? So you're, what you magnetize will shift based on dropping strategy and bringing the depth of love. Does that, does that make sense? It makes total sense. And then let's say, just to add to that, if I do have this deep ache or yearning to be a mother, mm. bring that into like, I want to be a mother. And that's what I'm... Sure. Of course. Now, again, strategizing that is often very difficult. Unless you're at the point where, fuck it, I want, you know, you're going to be the dad. You know, there's ways to create arrangements <laughs> nowadays that, you know, so you're not limited by if you really want to be a mother. However, to practice with the yearning of it, which I think is your question. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Bring it to the next time you have sex. Let, you don't have to say a goddamn thing, mm -hmm. but imagine just like, imagine that you're being filled with, with the seed of love, like actually practice making your body receiving Now You could also play with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it can, it actually can be sort of sexy role play, obviously, if there's, you know, if everybody's cool with it, but, but you can actually work with that yearning. Like, give me your, it's very sexy. Give me your baby. Like, I want to have your baby. Like, guys, would that be okay with you if she practiced that sexually? Just let her see. Like, okay, like, okay. So there's a few, there's a, a few ways that you can work with that. It's yeah. like feeling into the feeling without strategizing every single person I meet being like, yes, are you going to contribute to my child's college fund? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Are, you, are you stable enough to, you know, create an emotional, right? Um, again, strategy, strategizing for the right person. Now, here's what you could do. Here's what you could do. Write a, spend, spend as a practice, spend a couple hours this weekend writing down everything that the perfect lover has or the perfect partner has for you. And then when you meditate or you dance or you practice, spend a few moments really feeling him. Right? So you're, you're literally aligning your practice and your openness to, to that, to him. Right? And then let it go and go be love, right? So you, you've honored it, you've, you've, you've clearly laid it out, you bring it into your daily practice, this person that you, like this, this, the texture of the person that you really wanna be with, responsible, fierce, da, 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 da. And then you cultivate all of the traits that would magnetize that. So if you when, you, when you write this down, this is super important for women who are probably asking the same question. When you write down the traits of what you want in a partner, what do you have to do to be the polarizing, magnetizing opposite of that? Does that make sense? Yeah, and, 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 and it, if there's any strategy at all, that's it, <laughs> right? So we, like I was talking about with Stephanie, like if, if, if if she wants to be led, then she has to cultivate the trait of, of trust and even helplessness, sacred, sacredly, sacredly, right? Um, so that would be the same piece. And then when you go out with people, right, and you have flings or there's love or whatever, you get to practice those traits. Mm. Right? And now you're literally embodying and installing in your nervous system all of these traits that most women were not taught. Most women have not been taught.
these things, just like the men haven't been taught, right? Are you with me? Is this making sense? Yeah, I'm making total sense. And I love that because it brings in the combination of, I'm still not letting life happen at me, but mm -hmm. yet I'm not strategizing too much, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a razor's edge, my love. Yeah. yeah. And, and all great practice is, all great practice is both having a strong intention and a clear energy and also allowing. Yeah. Every great spiritual teaching has had some form of that approach, right? What we're doing that's a little different that I think is soup that makes it tantric practice, right? And this is more in the Vajrayana Buddhism approach, but it is that your body is the instrument of prayer. So in cultivating devotion, if you want a man of deep purpose, how would you, how is your level of devotion, right? And so cultivating these things, and this is a good practice, like here are the things I want in a man, talk to your girlfriends about it. Like what's a trait that would really inspire this man? And then you cultivate it, right? What's a trait that, so again, purpose and devotion are beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, right? Um, and it doesn't mean that he can't be devotional to your purpose too, but this is what your heart wants, right? So you're honoring that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And you're calling in from Israel. Yeah, Jerusalem. Oh, that's so fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you for, thank you for joining us. Yeah. yeah for, thank you for offering me. So I think that's a really important piece when we bring in this idea of partnership. Same thing for the men, right? What do you want? What are the traits you want? And, and rate yourself or have your friends, like if you're a man, like have your men's group rate you. Like, okay, how am I in terms of purpose? If I want a woman of great devotion, rate me. Like, where am I as a man of deep purpose, right? Right, if I want a woman who is who's like the embodied expression of love, am I the embodied expression of consciousness? Have your friends rate you. What would they need? And that's your practice. If you do that and you just allow them to appear and you practice that over the course of weeks, months, even a year or so, that works whether in a relationship, whether you're attracting a partner, we're always evoking our opposites. which is both liberating and frustrating because it means we are in charge. We are not at, we are at cause, not at effect. Okay. I'm just gonna adjust my seating here for a second. Just about at the top of the hour, John. Do you do you want to take another question, or do you? Yeah, I'll take one, I'll take one more. Okay, great. So I had kind of budgeted ninety minutes, but I'm not sure if that was right. But but the, it's an hour call. Yeah, but we're you know we're here. <laughs> yeah, we'll take one more. All right, Emmett. Hey, hey Emmett. How about that? Um, it's been really inspiring so far. Uh, so about a month and a half ago. Um, my relationship with my long-term partner ended, um, moved out, spent a couple weeks in the woods by myself, uh, solo retreat style. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was more of the right move than I expected. Mm. Um, I'm back, I'm back in the city, a new apartment. And um, the space to reconnect with her is available. Um, she is open to reconnecting, and I'm, yeah, my heart's still there. Mm. My heart's still with her. Mm. And I, I want to I want to reconnect, but like you were saying about that, like big tide of karmas, you know, they're all that the tide's still there um so i'm i have some trepidation uh and my you know my my guts leaning toward i want like a 
I want to set up like the clearest, most focused, like, like we interact for one hour once a week, and like that's the peak. <laughs> and I'm like, right. Um, I'm masculine at work there, man. That's so great. <laughs> stepping up really hard on that side. I've been the flowy, arty guy, <laughs> you know, and it served me really well. Like my intuition's there. Ooh. It serves the relationship. Yeah. Um, Nothing wrong with that, by the way, brother. It's just it's integration, like you're talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I like I want to take all those skills. I really want to like take what I've got, and I want to focus the fuck out of it into this this container i want to like right. I, I really want to find my masculine edge i want to be able to show up as like the representation of, of of the dream partner she's got in there great okay now let that go <laughs> who cares what she who i mean i don't say who cares but let's let go what her dream partner is okay because that doesn't matter. Let's go to what's your deepest purpose in life? What are you here to do, man? Um, Just very, you can be very vague. Like I'm here to lift consciousness and love in the world. I'm here to alleviate poverty. I'm here to Whatever it is, I'm here to bring abundance. I'm, whatever it is, what are you here for? I, I love that. Yeah, I, lo- I love feeling that subtle spot and, and penetrating it and, and feeling the, like, the, the, the stuck feelings, the actual like sensations coming to the surface. Okay. I'm going to hold that. So you're 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 here to hold space for the truth to emerge. Am I getting that right? Language is important, which is why I'm focusing on language. It's it's important you know why you're here, bro. Because if you don't, you're going to be swayed by her, the big her, whether it's a woman or it's life. So why are you here, right? And 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 grounding like literally planting your sacrum into the fucking core of the earth from that place is where you start then from there how would interacting with her this woman your ex enliven that serve that um inspire that does that make sense and then you create a container from that place because if you create, the, it doesn't matter how meticulous your container is, if it's for the reason of being the man that she wants, you're fucking off and you're, you're never going to win it because she'll feel your need for her approval or opening or surrender or whatever. And she'll feel that and she, there'll be a part of her that does not trust you. Yeah. No matter how it goes, like I want it, I want to be proud of how I show up in it. Like, when it when it really comes down to it, it's like, like I'm ready to step up for myself there. Great. So I would I would just re- change the term step up to ground down. I'm ready to ground. And and really, I, when I say ground, I mean you can get this stuff on the virtual workshop. There's a bunch of exercises I do on literally planting your ass into the earth, and, you know, feeling the core, and, and it, it's literal. It's literal, like your grounding is the place to start. Your grounding and your purpose then sounds, fit her in from there, right? Then choose how you want to spend time. It's not like, how do I strategize, but pretend, but make it seem like I'm not strategizing because I'm so conscious. How do I strategize winning her heart when I'm really, you, you know what I'm saying? And it's important that you're super honest with, you're ruthlessly, which is why I'm being a little rough on you, that you're ruthlessly honest about it. Like, okay. I don't know whether her and I should get back together or if there's a 2.0 of us. Um, I don't know what form it's going to take yet, 
but I do know that it has to come from me being grounded in my own life so fully that that I actually am capable of serving her and the world in my practice and in my work. Are you with me? Did I lose you? No, you Looks like you went off and thought there for a second, so I just want to make sure you're staying with me, bro. No, that, that, that hit the spot. Okay. So I love the idea of reconnecting with her in its very tight container and just, just come again from the place of deeply grounded, know why I'm here, and, and, and let that be... That, let that be the place that you interact from because that's a gift to her. Now you're gifting her. You're not looking to get from her approval or sexual energy. You're gifting her like, I'm here in the world and you are a beautiful, radiant, lovely woman that I want to spend time with. Right? That's, that's different. Yeah, ladies? It's a different, yeah, okay. All right, man. It's good to see you again. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and you know, please come back. Let us know how it went. Yeah. All right. So I think that that will wrap it up for today. Um, I appreciate it. If if you found value in this, please consider donating to Claire's place. Um, and we're going to be back. I'm going to let Nicolette take those details because I suck at that stuff. Thank you. So um, a reminder that our next call is going to be October 6th. It's another Tuesday at the same time, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, I put the link for Claire's Place Foundation in the chat box just now. I'm also going to put the link for this uh, Art of Spiritual Intimacy online immersion with uh, John and David Data on December 4th through 6th. That's in there. And then I also put in the chat box uh, our information on our virtual workshop, which John mentioned. And actually today we have uh, an office hours call. So if you want to keep the conversation going, um, you can join with a free trial today and, and hop on that call as well. That's at four o'clock Pacific time today. Okay. Uh, so lots happening. <laughs> yeah, lots going on. And um, so thank you all. Thank you. It's uh, just so wonderful to be with you as always. And um, we look forward to seeing you next month or in the future.